Okay, folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. We're going to go on with our um, discipleship course, excuse me, <coughs> following Jesus. And we're looking at relationships today. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we give you thanks today. And Lord, as we meditate on your word, we pray that it will bless our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we're looking at relationships with uh, people. Okay, so let's turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 18. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 18, it says, If any of, if you have any encouragement, uh, being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature uh, God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Being made in likeness, human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to be high to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father therefore my dear friends as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but now much more in my absence continue to work out your salvation with with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing but if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of coming coming from your faith I am glad and rejoice with you all so you too should be glad and rejoice with me um, this passage is really about conflict if you look at the first few verses it says if any of you have any encouragement uh, from being united with Christ if any of you uh, any comfort from his love if any fellowship with the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. So, basically there were women in the church that weren't getting on. And Paul wanted the church uh, in Philippi to be united. And what he's saying is, look, he goes on to talk about the Son of God came down from heaven. He, he was God, but he came down and he made himself of no reputation. And he humbled himself. You know, he was born in a stable, he was a carpenter, etc. And the reason why we get a lot of conflict in relationships, in marriages, in churches, in leadership teams, is because somebody in the church, in that scenario is being proud. Somebody in the marriage, or somebody in the church, or somebody in the relationship team, uh, leadership team is being proud, or being self-centered. And the way to avoid conflict is to be humble, to make yourself of no reputation, to be willing to be a servant rather than to lord it over people. That's the way to bring uh, peace in your marriage, it's the way to bring peace in the church, it's the way to bring peace in the leadership team. Uh, and it's always has been and it always will be. Humility is the key to peace in relationships. All right? Thank you for listening and uh, hope you enjoy this course. God bless you.